God bless you and holy greetings to you brothers and sisters. This is Scott Bradley coming to you again, coming to share something with you that I believe that the Lord has laid upon my heart. It's been a while since we've come to you uh, via this, this media, via this uh, 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 means to, to share with you what the Lord has laid upon my heart. But the Lord has laid something on my heart very recently. Let me first of all assure you that I'm not driving. I'm in the car, yes, but the car is stationary in a remote location. Uh, so I'm not driving and trying to do this at the same time. We have parked, and I'm going as I feel that the Lord is leading me to share with you. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is fear. Fear. Uh, as you have probably known me to travel, and if you look at my itinerary, you see that I'm a man who's constantly on the go, probably more. So now look like the ministry has opened up with the coming out of the new book uh, with uh, other various uh, means where people have been blessed by the ministry, and we're starting to get in more demand now. I've noticed my calendar is just filling up just continues to stay full and I thank the Lord I'm busy thank the Lord I'm preaching and sharing uh, but there's something that I've observed here recently uh, because of the day and time that we're living in brothers and sisters we're living in a day and time of uncertainty and I believe that Jesus is soon to return I believe the signs are pointing that way I believe that we can see even with the confusion and the direction of America uh, that has turned its heart away from God that has turned away uh, and is, is, is now being being led uh, by a man who, in many cases, they're starting to consider whether he's mentally fit to be the president of this country. Now, I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to bash him at this time. I'm, I'm praying for President Trump every day, and I believe when I tell you that I'm praying for him. I don't agree with practically anything he says or does, but I am praying for him because the Bible has commanded us to do that. That being said, I'm noticing that many people today are operating, professing Christians, people that claim to know the Lord, are operating in fear. I want to put something on your heart and ask you, do you really know the Lord? There's a big difference between being in church, singing in the choir, even preaching the gospel, deacon on the deacon board, giving your offering in church, and knowing Jesus, knowing him. You can know him. Here's something that I heard the other day, which I found to be somewhat disturbing, but personally, I thought I had known the Lord. But when uh, she made this statement, I really wondered, do you really know the Lord? Uh, because she said that she had been with a, a particular group that challenged the way she was baptized and she was now considering whether she should get baptized again and her response was I want to make sure that I cover all the bases uh, that's a person I want to do you really know the Lord and the reason I say that is because if you know the Lord you're not in fear you're not uh, uh, afraid that if I do this wrong it's gonna mess up if I do that wrong uh, I'm not gonna to go to heaven if I do that wrong I'm gonna to go to hell you know I think that when we really begin to walk with Jesus and get in fellowship with Jesus we no longer fear hell I know that hell is real and let me make that very plain hell is real unfortunately people are going but I as a follower of Christ and listen to what I'm saying, because I don't just like to use the term Christian. That's a religious term. I like to go deeper than that. As a follower of Christ, I do not fear hell. I am not going to hell. And you know why I know that? Because I know Jesus. And because my fellowship with him and my walk with him has given me an assurance that I'm going to be with him forever. Now, that being said, let me throw a little sidebar in here. I do not believe. Once saved, always saved. I don't believe that. I don't believe the scripture backs that. In fact, I think that, that when a person, and God has always given us a free will, when a person decides to up and walk away from this great gift of salvation, he himself or she herself has forfeited that right because they choose to no longer follow the path of Christ. Now, the question was asked one time, uh, what will cause a person to be lost, sin or rejecting Christ? Well, the answer to that question is rejecting Christ because Christ died for our sins. And the Bible even said to we as believers, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous. Uh, if we sin, if we repent of our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So sin can be forgiven. But if we reject Christ, there's no one that can forgive us of our sin. Only God can forgive us and bring about the redemptive salvation. And that's through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he died for our sins. But again, I find that many people are walking in rules. They're walking in fear. They're walking in organization. Uh, other variables that we're walking in. We can quote scriptures, but do we really believe the scriptures? Do we really know the Lord? Because when you know him, there's a relationship. When you know him, you're not afraid of, of, of falling. You know, it kind of reminds me when I was when I was being brought up in the church. Uh, there was a contingent in the church of people that were always talking about the Lord is going to catch you. And that was, those are their words. The Lord is going to come and he's going to catch you. He's going to catch you. You know, as if to imply that the Lord was hiding in the bushes every other minute. And as soon as you mess up, ah, 
He jumps out the bush and gets you because he caught you. Caught you doing the wrong thing. Uh, you know, that's a fearful way to live. You know, what Apostle Paul declared, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. To stand in liberty means to walk in liberty. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, and this is the key, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Walking in Christ liberates us. And so, yes, there is a hell. Yes, people are going to hell. And yes, as a preacher of the gospel, I'm trying to stir you away from hell. But I don't fear hell because I'm not going. And you know why I know I'm not going? Because Jesus is my Lord. And Jesus paid the price to keep me out of hell. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. And you know what? It eliminates all fear. And that's why the Bible said God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Uh, so I'm looking at the attitude of people today in church, and they're afraid. They're afraid if I sin, if I mess up, God's going to get me. If I mess up, this is going to happen. You know, uh, it, it, you really ought to read the scripture, what Apostle Paul said in the seventh chapter of Romans. He talks about his struggles. He talks about the flesh. He talks about when I would do good, evil is always present. He says in the latter portion of the seventh chapter of Romans, I find a, 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 a law that that, that I don't want to do, I wind up doing. And those things I want to do, I can't do. Because there's a constant struggle in the flesh. There's a constant struggle uh, in, in, in the physical, in, in opposition to the spiritual. But then he says, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. So even, even though I'm struggling with things, and brothers and sisters, I think we need to be honest with ourselves. Most of us have something that we struggle with. You know, really, we have things that we're struggling with. We ought to be trying to overcome those things. We ought not try to do those things. Yes, I agree. And I don't think that we ought to just willfully just go and do the wrong thing. Because even Apostle Paul said uh, in the sixth chapter of Romans, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer therein? It comes with a transformation of heart and a fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me throw this in here. I was saying, and I probably said it on this media before, I do not live right to be saved. I live right because I'm saved. In other words, because Jesus Christ has become the Lord of my life, I follow the example of my Lord. I'm the servant. He's the master. And because I'm the servant, my motive is to do the will and to please my master. Jesus Christ is my master. He's my Lord. He's my God. And my motive is to please him. And that's why I've chosen to live the lifestyle after a godly manner because he's the Lord. But it doesn't mean that I won't fail. It doesn't mean that I won't mess up. It doesn't mean that I won't sin. It doesn't mean that I won't have weak moments. But he's faithful and just to forgive me. Why? Because he is my Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'm looking at the fear of people today. As I said before, we're fearing the times. We're fearing who's in government. We're afraid of the economy. We're afraid of this and that and the other. But I have an assurance that regardless to what happens, this world is not my home anyway. I'm just passing through time destined for eternity. But my hope, as the songwriter says, is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, and all of the ground is sinking sand. My hope is in Christ, and when everything else fails, Jesus never fails. My hope is in Christ, because he said that before his word fail, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand forever. And so I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on my hope. I'm standing on my faith in Jesus Christ. And you can judge me and say I'm not saved. And, and you, this, that, and the other. I've had people challenge me. Matter of fact, somebody uh, wrote me a, 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 a nice little uh, package text the other day telling me that I need to repent and I'm not a man of God and blah, 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 because of certain issues that I have dealt with, as I do as a man of God, as a leader, as a minister of the gospel, there are certain issues that I have to deal with. Politically, what's happening in the country today? What's happening in the world today? And uh, I was rebuked by uh, a man who uh, didn't think that I was necessary. Well, it really doesn't matter to me what he thinks, for that fact, anybody, because I'm in conversation with my Lord. And brothers and sisters, if you want to be strong, you've got to develop a relationship with the Lord. You need to know Jesus. Now, if you're not praying, how are you going to know him? If you're not talking to him in prayer and letting him talk to you, how are you going to know him? No wonder you're scared. No wonder you're afraid. No wonder you're, you're profess to be saved, but afraid of it. Do wrong, I'm going to hell. I better not do that, I'm going to hell. Jesus, you act like Jesus is standing in the corner with his arms folded, looking at you over his brow. 
just waiting on you to mess up so he can throw you to hell. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. That's not the Jesus that I've come to know and love who loves me. That's the image that the devil is painting of you, painting for you. Know him. Pray. To spend time, every last one of you, spend time every day in meditation with the Lord. If it's nothing but 10, 15 minutes, start there. You know, the late, great Bishop C.H. Mason, uh, the founder of the Churches of God in Christ, uh, spent hours in prayer. And he was known as a part of his legacy, spent hours on his knees in prayer before the Lord. And had such a tremendous anointing and such a tremendous confidence when he ministered to people because he had spent time with Jesus. And I'm convinced when you spend time with Jesus, it's not going to leave you the same. So I want to reiterate, admonish every one of you that are hearing uh, this the sound of my voice and seeing this image. Take time every day to talk with Jesus. Spend time on your knees in quiet meditation talking to Jesus. And you know what? He's going to talk to you. And when he talks to you, he's going to give you confidence. And you'll be able to say like David said, even though I go through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. How could he say that unless he knew the Lord? The Hebrew boys, they went into the fiery furnace and told the king, we're not answer, uh, careful to answer you concerning this matter, O Nebuchadnezzar. The God that we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But notice what else they say. If not, if we die, we perish in this flame. We're not going to bow down. He will deliver us out of your hands. How could they say that facing the fiery furnace, facing death by horrible destruction, facing a horrific death, and yet talk confidently? How could they say that? Because they knew the Lord. How could Daniel continue to pray in defiance of the order of the king and wind up in the den of lions? Why? Because he knew the Lord. You can have that same confidence. Let's go to the disciples. You not realize that historically, the history is recorded that every one of the disciples, the 12 disciples of Jesus, which, which, which includes Matthias, uh, Judas killed himself, uh, every one of the disciples, including Apostle Paul, all of them died a death of martyrdom. All of them died a horrific death, except for John. He was the only one to live an old man and die of old age. But it's not for lack of trying. They tried to boil him on oil. They put him on the Isle of Patmos. All kind of things that happened. And yet he lived to be an old man and died. Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down. Uh, Andrew was crucified on a cross in the shape of an X. Uh, others were beheaded, speared to death. Oh my, all kinds of horrific death. Uh, tied by four different animals to, to the limbs. Two, uh, one to the both legs and one to both arms. And, and the animals run in four different directions and pull them apart. And yet they died confidently. In the face of danger. Why? Because they knew Jesus. And brothers and sisters, these day and times we're living in, don't be afraid. Get closer to Jesus. He'll give you the confidence and the faith to go through. God bless you. I'm going to close off here. But look, my new book is coming out. The Challenges of the 21st Century Church. Go to our website, scottbradleyministries.v. That's V as in Victor, P as in Paul, vpweb.com. Uh, again, we, we expect it to be out September 1st. That's our projection date. Everything is in place. Everything is ready. The presses are rolling now. Uh, you're going to have information on how you can order it. You can order it online. Uh, you also can understand, be able to download the book. It'll be available for, for book download. Again, I don't know exactly how that works, but the information will be there for you. The Challenges of the 21st Century church. I believe that you'll be blessed. I believe that you'll be informed. I believe that you'll be inspired. Go to our website, check out our itinerary. We've got quite a few speaking engagements coming up. We're traveling coast to coast, preaching and sharing the gospel. And we look forward uh, as we continue to go forward. Look forward to this book coming out. Uh, look forward to great things happening. Until next time, this is Scott Bradley saying, God bless you. I love you. Don't fear. Walk close with Jesus and you should have confidence in him. God bless.